Hi, now we are at lecture number eight in this lecture series on computer forensics with me, Joachim Chevrestad from the University of Skövde. And now we, we've left the, the more fundamental parts or the more abstract parts uh, of a forensic examination. And now we're getting into some ha more hands-on lectures uh, for the rest of this lecture series. And what we're going to begin with is to talk a little bit about indexing. Uh, and what indexing is, is basically a pre-processing task. A pre-processing task is a task that you do when you set up your case. Uh, and an index is, in forensic terms, a database of the strings in the raw data on a hard drive, com combined with information about where each string is located. So the idea is that when, when you get to work on a computer, you extract a hard drive, you do a forensic disk image, and then when you start working your case, then you can begin with creating an index. And the index will then contain all the strings on the hard drive and a database that tells you where each string is located. So for instance, if there is a lot of files with a lot of different texts uh, on your hard drive, the index will tell you what, uh, what words that are present in each file. And the good, good thing about this is that it allows for very, very, very fast searching. So for instance, if you want to do a search, then you type the word you want to search for. And if the word's in the index, the, the forensic software can tell you in which files or where on the hard drive that the string you searched for is located. Uh, another great use for the index is that it can be used to create a word list for password cracking. Because since the index virtually contains all strings that are present on a hard drive, then it also contains all the words, all the cohesive um, words on the hard drive and those can of course be very useful for password cracking because say that a user wrote down all his passwords in, in a text file and hid it somewhere on his computer well then all, all the strings that are present in that text file which is all the user's password will be present in the index so you can extract the index and use it as a word list for, with some password cracking software. Uh, this is how you usually talk about indexes in, in general terms. However, there are some terms related to indexing that we need to understand. And, uh, well, what we basically need to understand is how the index is built up. Because when I say that the index contains all strings on a hard drive or all, in, or all strings in a set of data, that's not necessarily completely true. Because in order to divide the, the data set or uh, the data on the hard drive into different strings, the computer or the software that's creating the index must know when to split a string, what sign divides a string. Um, and to understand this, there, is, there are some terms that we need to know. Begin with spaces, uh, and spaces in terms of indexing uh, are signs that separate strings. Um, Next is letters, and letters are signs that can be included in strings. And then we have noise words, which is a bit unrelated, but noise words are simply words that can be, or strings that can be excluded from the index. So if we're working a case, we may know that there is usually a lot of ors. The word or is, should be commonly apparent on the hard drive, so we can tell the computer to not index or. Uh, and why is this understanding spaces and letters important? Well, because first of all, uh, spaces, the, the space letters or the signs that are considered spaces will never be, be part of the index because those are the signs that we use to separate strings and strings, that's what's included in the index. So let's say that we're trying to use... Uh, uh, or we're doing an indexing and we select that ampersand is a space, then we cannot do a search that contains the letter, the, the sign ampersand because the ampersand is not there because the ampersand is used to split strings. Uh, at the same time, it's important to know what signs we use as letters because letters are virtually the only signs that can be included in the index. Um, Anyhow, the process of building the index is that the software that we're using will be looking at the raw data from beginning to end and add every consecutive string to the index. And a consecutive string is a consecutive st string 
of the letters that we sho chosen as letters. Um, and the resultant index will of course be dependent on what letters we choose as space letters and noise words in our settings. Let's look at an, an example and consider a situation where we use A to Z, case insensitive as our letters, and all other signs as spaces. And then looking at the data, data string below, uh, then we can see that following the, uh, following the fact that A to Z, case insensitive, that's our letters, and spaces are all other signs, then the data from this data set that will be added to the index is first we see in, in the beginning of the string we see a bracket and then we see a dollar sign and some other weird thing, stuff, but then we see beginning with an S we see the word stretch. And the word stretch is contained with all letters, right? So that will be added to the index. And then is an equal sign, which is a space word in this example. So it, so the stretch word is separated there, and that's put in the index. And then continuing to read, we can see that the next word that will be added to the index is the word center. And after the center is an equal sign, and then there, there is some jibber jabber, and then we reach a bracket and we reach FF 80 80 80. And from this part, FF only will be added to the index because we decided that the only letters in our case settings is A to Z. And this means that the only useful searches we can do in this index is A to Z. It also means that if we want to use the resultant index for password cracking, we can only expect to crack passwords that are only containing A to Z. So let's say that we make a modification to this and we say that uh, we also ex accept numbers as letters. Still we have that all other signs than A to Z and numbers are spaces. And now the result will be that, well, we have a five in the middle that will be added to the index. But looking at the bracket FF part, now FF 80, 80, 80 all together will be added to the index because it's a consecutive strings, string of what we consider to be letters in our index. And we can consider any sign to be a letter. If we, for instance, uh, are working a case where we're gonna crack passwords and we know that the, the person that owns the computer has a tendency to use brackets in his passwords, well, then we add brackets as a letter. So I hope you understand this very brief discussion on indexing. Uh, and as I said, indexing is a pre-processing task that you usually do before you do anything else. But what you should know is that creating an index is a time-consuming task. Uh, so if you're not going to use it for anything, then you should, then you might as well skip it. But when you have your index completed, then it's very good for searching, searching quickly, and for finding and for, for cracking passwords, of course. So in the next lecture, we will actually discuss different types of searching. Uh, and index being one of them. So I will leave you, leave you right now. Thank you for your attention. As always, questions in the comments field. Bye.